When you hear the word Renaissance, you first think of Italy, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, Michelangelo. But I'm gonna tell you about someone different, someone that lives in the Northern Renaissance, a German artist, and that artist is Albert Stuer. Albert Stuer was born in May 21st, 1471. He was uh, the second oldest of, the, of 18 siblings. His family was first hung from Hungary, but then they Germanized from the name Stuer. He was the favorite son of his father, just like he wrote in the next in here. My father took special delight in me, saying that I was enthusiastic in working and learning. He put me to school, and when I had learned to read and write, he took me home from school and taught me the goldsmith street. But he didn't like that much the goldsmith street. He learned that he liked painting, and after a lot of thinking, his father decided that he was going to learn with Michael Waldemar, the, first, the best artist in all Nuremberg. Michael Waldemann brought the Netherlands Renaissance to Germany, and he had the largest workshop for woodcuts for books. Durer learned woodcuts, but of course, because for the books, but he made them more detailed. He started his classes at when he was 15 years old. Here is one example that while Michael Waldemann did it, the dance macabre. When he finished his apprenticeship, he, he went to the Wonder Year at Gap Years, in that is taken in Germany. This takes four years to extend the experience of the artist, and he just concentrated in drawing and plans for woodcuts. As you can see in here, he does a portrait, the left hand, a white virgin, and the left leg. Also, he did this one, that is a St. Christopher that he made in 1490, and it's a woodcut. He went to Colmar to learn with Martin Skunker, but that he died the previous year, so he needed to learn by his own. When he returned to, Wall, Wall, to Wall, the Nuremberg, he then took another trip in 1494, and went to Venice. In this moment, Italy had a very large movement, so that means there was less opportunity for the outsiders of Italy to gain a lot of, a lot of popularity, just like in there. But he saw in Italy a true renewal of aesthetics and creative, and so he flung himself to Italy. And here he learned the perspective and the Venetian painting, just like in here he did the Venetian lake. He also Interested in the artistic field, he got very curious in nature. And when he was taking his trip back to Nuremberg, he started to do watercolors, just in this one, Pond in the Woods. This was very, very, very famous in that time because of the watercolor paintings, because it was modern, it was constant, and it expressed the colors correctly. But also he went to a traditional, a more traditional space, and so he studied this, the craft. When he returned to Nuremberg, the tranquil, youthful period, in 1495, he created a workshop, and he created his most three famous woodcuts. Apocalypse, that is this one, is a 16th series woodcut. This is very impressive because he took a wood block and started to engrave all these little details and then printed with a paper, with a printer that was very famous in this time. Also, when he mastered the bearing, he created Nemesis. And by combining Italian and German Flemish traditions, he created a lot more. He also started to create humanist portraits, biblical themes, philosophical allergies, uh, general scenes, and works on nature. Then he took a third trip in 1505 and returned to Italy again. In this time, he only concentrated in tempera onlining, like Adoration of Maggie. And he was gaining much popularity because of his engravings and woodcuts. Then he concentrated again in watercolor and watercolor. So he created a number of still lives of metals and sections of animals, just like the young hair he created in 1502 and the great piece of turf. Also, he created the, the praying hands with just silver point and chalk. Because he was getting so much it, 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 popularity, in Venice he was given valuable commissions from the agreement German community for the Church of Santa Bartolomeo. And he created this altarpiece, the Feast of Roses or Adoration of the Virgin. And here you can see portraits of the Venice German community, that, and it shows a very strong Italian influence, meaning that this wasn't really his work. He really didn't like it. Then in 1507, he went back to Nuremberg, and in 1507 he created the most celebrated paintings, Adam and Eve, Martyrdom of the Ten, and Adoration of the Tyranny. Also, he created a lot more of woodcuts, just like The Great Passion, Life of the Virgin, and he developed many arts, just like the Midtone, the Shadows, and the Chilras. Also, he created 37 woodcuts of the series of Passion, and when he noted that his paintings weren't gaining that much money in 1513-1516, he stopped completely and just concentrated in woodcuts and engravings. And that's when he, he created the most famous, Night, Death, and the Devil, and Melancholy. 
Melancholy is very interesting because it shows different aspects of science and much more. But it's interesting the details. It's very curious because the magic square over here, it says the time and also his name. As you can see in his paintings, he normally puts them in the art and not in, um, not in the paper apart. In 1520, when his, when his patron died, Maximilian I, he went to Netherlands and went to his death patron, Charles V. In this time, Charles V was being coronated, so he didn't put that much attention with Albert. So he learned more. He went to practice silver point, chalk, and charcoal. And he made him sell all of his paintings, and he wrote them all in a book. And it was very interesting how much they sold, because it wasn't normal in that time. He got a fever and went back to Nuremberg. And in this time, he couldn't do that much of, of a thing. He was sick, he couldn't work. So he died in April 6, 1522, and he created his last painting, The Four Apostles. During start, and here I want to show you the great difference between the first one, St. Christopher, to the last one he created. All of this was from the Italian movement to the Venice and all the trips he did. That's why it's incredible difference. Also, influence. He exerted a huge influence on artists of succeeding generations, especially in printmaking. His success in spreading his reputation across Europe with prints that inspired inspiration of major artists such as Raphael, Titian, and Parmi, which all collaborated with printmaking in order to promote and distribute their work. His paintings didn't get that great of an influence, but he helped the start of the Northern Renaissance, that is a very different thing, because he created a cultural diffusion between a, both of them. He also created four, eight books, the Four Books of Measurements and the Four Books of Human Proportion. This is different because in, in Northern Renaissance they used the grid for this. And as you can see in the book, they explain all of these, these things. He created a new art, a new type of way to look at the Renaissance. He, create, he combined German with Italian and created a totally new cultural diffusion for all of these arts. He used the printmaking and engravings, things that no one used in that time. So he created a new art, a new type of art so everyone can use. Now we can use this a lot of times, and that's why Albert Durer is so special. Because he dared himself to go to Italy in a time that no one wanted to go, because of the immigrants around. Albert Durer is a great influence to everyone, and that's why he's one of the greatest Renaissance men. Thank you. Good job.